One of the most gruesome discoveries found inside Tomb 10A was a mummified head. It had been ripped from its owner's body by tomb robbers. The head was carefully wrapped in linen with elegant painted eyebrows, but these details offer no clues as to which tomb occupant it belonged. Was it the head of Governor Jehudinacht or his wife? To try to solve this mystery, the mummy's head was studied at Massachusetts General Hospital by doctors Paul Chapman and Rajiv Gupta. This is pretty unusual to scan a mummy, especially a mummy that is uh, 4,000 years old. To look inside the mummy's wrappings, a sophisticated CT scanner was used. Uh, CT stands for computed tomography, and it's an X-ray based machine where you have an X-ray source and a detector and they rotate very, very fast around the patient and you take multiple pictures around the head of the patient, in this case, the mummy. And from these different uh, projection images, you acquire slice by slice data, okay? And which is what we were able to do with this mummy. We had something which is a fraction of a millimeter, so much thinner than a human hair is what we were able to scan. And because we were able to scan uh, using this very special prototype scanner, uh, we were able to see the details that are otherwise not possible in most other scanners. The results offered tantalizing clues about Egyptian burial practices. Even though on the outside the mummy looks like a human skull or a human face, in the inside it is very altered. And it is, uh, so there were bone cuts that were made in the mummy that we were not expecting. There were um, pieces of bones that were missing and they were nowhere to be found in the wrapping. So they were actually purposely taken out. Ironically, many of the bones that were removed could have been helpful in solving the puzzle of who this mummy was. But instead, they offered another mystery. The, the cheekbones are uh, from the outside, they look normal, but they, if you look inside on the scans, they are, they are missing. Similarly, this bone has been removed in the mummy. Also, the front part of the condyle, the, the jaw bone, has been actually resected and taken out. But why were these bones missing? The team believes it has to do with the ancient Egyptian funeral ritual known as the opening of the mouth ceremony, which magically allowed that person to eat, drink, breathe, and speak for all of eternity. The places where they have done the bone cuts are exactly the places where all the, the jaw muscles used for chewing are uh, attached. So if you cut out these bones, you will actually mobilize the jaw. The jaw would not be supported and you can open it as wide as you want. The bone cuts appeared purposeful, not accidental. They also showed a surprising surgical skill. So when I looked at the, the way these uh, bone cuts were made and the way this mummy was prepared, I was absolutely impressed by the level of sophistication and knowledge that these people had 4,000 years ago. Most of our knowledge of anatomy and medical terminology and literature is traced to European masters, okay, and it's much more recent. It is no more than three, 400 years old. While here we are witnessing something which is 4,000 years old, and they're able to do processes and do essentially surgical operations that are very, very sophisticated. This fall, the scientific team has a new chance to answer some of the questions raised by this unique find. Analysis has recently begun on DNA extracted from one of the mummy's teeth, shown here. Successful DNA testing on an uncontaminated sample could tell us whether this is Mr. or Mrs. Jehudinak. Will the mummy reveal its secrets? Time will tell whether modern science can shed light on this ancient mystery. To see the mummy and hear more about the extraordinary story of the tomb, visit The Secrets of Tomb 10A, on view at the Museum of Fine Arts Boston from October 18th to May 16th. The exhibition is supported by Bank of America. Major funding is provided by the Calderwood Charitable Foundation. Additional support for the exhibition is provided by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. Special thanks to Massachusetts General Hospital.